I would like to introduce you to the Kimberlite mine. I want to tell you a little of the history behind it today and show you some cool old photos that we have from 1909-1912 era and this map from 1926. As you can see here, this is a 1926 map. And although today we know there are seven diamond pipes outside what's known as Crater Diamond State Park here, at that time they only knew about the Black Lick, the American, and the Kimberlite Mine in 1926. So I want to give you some of the history right now and the video I upload tomorrow and subsequent days, I will actually take you to the Kimberlite Mine site and show you what it looks like today. As is typical with Kimberlite and Lamperite intrusions around the world, when one diamond pipe is discovered, there are others within a few miles waiting to be discovered. And the occurrence in Arkansas is no exception to this geologic rule. About three miles northeast of the Arkansas and Ozark mines, another pipe called the Kimberlite Mine was discovered. It was hidden in the wooded hills at an altitude 140 feet higher than the first discovered outcroppings. A geologist from Minneapolis, Minnesota named Austin Q. Millar formed the Kimberlite Diamond Mining and Washing Company. In 1909, several long trenches were excavated using a plow pulled by two mules. Also, three or four prospecting shafts were put down from 20 to 40 feet in depth. The company claims to have exposed a large body of completely oxidized kimberlite or peridotite. Actually, it was lamperite, but they didn't know that at the time. Here's a map of the area, and this is one of those trenches they dug with by pulling a plow with mules, uh, that'd be the hard way to do it, and the trench also went this way because they cut through kimberlite or lamperite uh, the entire length here, so they cut this way to see how big it was. They also made uh, a cut here and a cut here. Then they had a warehouse building, and years ago when I was doing diamond exploration for uh, Star Resources, I found the stones, the rocks that that stood at the corners to hold the building up off of the ground. So I found where this spot was. Um, <clears throat> here this says number eight. Well, this was one of those pits, those shafts that they dug down 20 to 40 feet by hand. And that may not seem very far, but if you're digging straight down, that's a long way. Here's another one called number seven. And here's another one here. So they put these shafts down and you know, they went 20 to 40 feet deep, and it probably goes hundreds <laughs> of feet deep, but that's as far as they could dig by hand practically and all. Uh, let's go back, take another glance. These guys were just taking a break here at the Kimberlite Mine Trench. We only have a couple of photos and a map from that era. Um, but uh, old mule and a plow like that, that is a tough way to excavate. So they would loosen it with that and then shovel it by hand. It looks like all these men are here by sh uh, to shovel by hand, but it probably had to be cut through. And then they, you see, they piled these rocks up here at the side, and that's what you see here piled up. So uh, these two pictures go together. So this is the side of the trench, and then you can see... Those same rocks there, this is down in the trench where the guys were working. So, um, <clears throat> let me go on and give you a little more short history about the Kimberlite mine. Uh, the mine was more remote than others nearer to Murfreesboro. Access to the mine was difficult, and water critically needed for diamond recovery was much harder to obtain there at the Kimberlite mine than for the mines lying beside Prairie Creek 
and the Little Missouri River. See, this is what we now call Crater Diamond State Park. This is Prairie Creek, and there was ample water there, and this is Little Missouri River, and it, you know, even bigger. So, uh, lots of water here, not so much up here in the hills, 140 feet higher. There weren't creeks and rivers flowing by it because of the altitude. They're way up there, so it's quite a climb and a remote site, and... Um, the roads weren't good. It was tough to get to work and back every day. Because of its remoteness and the lack of available water, work there at the Kimberlite mine progressed slowly. Several diamonds were found, but the returns did not seem to be worth all the effort exerted. By 1912, work at the Kimberlite mine was halted. And they went on and did you know, work at the American and the Black Lick, but that's, that's another story. But for now, this is just an introduction to the Kimberlite Mine, and I'll take you there. Join me tomorrow for uh, other videos. I'll take you to the site.